Have you ever wanted to create professional-looking videos but found the process too time-consuming and complicated? Totally get it. I was there too. Well, I have some exciting news for you. I recently discovered Big View Video Editor, and it has completely transformed the way I create my videos. With Big View, you and I can make our videos straight to the point, engaging, and professional in just minutes. Big View's AI technology has made it possible for you and I to create 10 times more videos in a fraction of the time it usually takes us. And the best part is, with their video teleprompter app and video editor, you can capture multiple video takes, choose the best one for your video marketing or your vlog, and you can add automatic subtitles, social media closed captions, and so much more. The best part, it's incredibly easy to use, and you can shoot and edit your videos on the go with just your phone, or you could do it on your desktop. And so if you're ready to streamline your video creation process just like I have and start making amazing videos that connect with your audience, then you need to check out Big View Video Editor just like I did. And I have a best part about it again. You can try it for free. Just head over to the show notes of this episode to get the link to sign up and start creating your own amazing videos today. You are listening to the Self-Employed Success Podcast. This is your source for inspiration, advice, and strategies for building financial independence without a traditional corporate job. Each episode features interviews with successful entrepreneurs, freelancers, and business owners who have achieved financial freedom through self-employment. Whether you're just starting out on your entrepreneurial journey or you're a seasoned pro looking for new ideas, this podcast will give you the tools and insights you need to create a life and business that you love. Join us as we explore the world of self-employment and learn how to build the income, the freedom, and fulfillment you deserve. Welcome to the show, Sean. I am absolutely excited to have you. I cannot wait for our conversation, Sean. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's my pleasure to be here, Martine. Thank you so much for having me. Young and successful, the story of a 22-year-old CEO is what we're going to be talking about today. I love, love this title. So inspiring. So many people today, I feel the modern age of the working environment is changing. My story has been that... Less than three years ago, I was laid off from a six-figure corporate job. And I have to say, it was the best thing that's ever happened to me. But I wasn't 22, Sean. I was not 22. And so how in the hell in the world, (laughs) what were you, 12 when you started this? Tell us your story because you are so successful. And, you know, we'll dive into how you started. Uh, and I want to hear from you tips and tricks so you can help us, you know, as self-employed individuals to continue to succeed. Uh, and we'll wrap up this episode understanding exactly how to work with you, how to find you and the goodies that you have. So let's start with this. You were 12 years old when you started this. What's what's the deal? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Martina. I wouldn't want to give our listeners the uh, the wrong idea <laughs> um, of, of me starting out that young. Actually, don't pressure yourself when you hear that. Oh, this guy started young, or he's younger, and he became CEO. I titled my book "CEO at 22," but there was nothing glorious about that time. To be honest, I had my first office. It's such a small, cramped office. To be honest, it's thirty square meters. There was nothing there. It was a tiled floor. It's not like a cozy office that you have right now. You see on the movies or you see in some big tech companies um, building. It's nothing like that. When I started, it was just me. I was freelancing and I was trying to sell SEO. And here in the Philippines during that time, people didn't know what it was. So there was nothing glorious about my book, CEO at 22. It's just my story. And I wrote it just in case God takes me home early. And I leave my sons and they don't know me yet. So that's really the purpose why I wrote the book. But 
I also thought about people being able to enjoy what I was writing. So I'm very particular with the grammar, the storytelling. I started at, at 21. You see, I failed a lot in college. I failed 28 units, almost got kicked out of school. The dean took me aside, said, you got to finish or we'll, we'll, you're out. And so I deleted all my computer games because I was so addicted. That's why I failed. And I said, finally, I should try to finish school. And that's what I did. Got a diploma. But no one's going to hire some guy with 28 failing units in their in his transcript of record. So virtually, I was unemployable. And unlike you, you have a six-digit paycheck. I didn't have uh, nowhere near that big. And I was able to find a job at Hewlett Packard, but it was... It was not that great. You know, the pay wasn't that great. I mean, for Philippine standard, it was okay. But it wasn't the life that I envisioned I'm, I'm going to have. And really what happened was is a series of divine interventions. I don't know if you guys believe in divine interventions. I do. I'm a born-again Christian. And it's really, I felt God's hand just leading and guiding me to what happened next. So I started a blog called God and You. It's a blog about my faith, and not a lot of people were reading my stuff. So I researched about how do I increase my readers and subscribers, and that's how I stumbled upon SEO. I, I tried to learn it and apply it and experiment on it. And when I found some strategies that were working, I journaled it in this other blog called SEO Hacker. And people started reading my other blog, SEO Hacker. They started sharing my stuff. It grew. I got my first clients. They were pretty significant deals. And that's really how it got started. I was just blogging for the Lord and stumbled upon SEO accidentally. And suddenly it became a business and I was freelancing. And I, when it grew and grew, I started to hire some people. I started to rent my first office. Now, when I'm saying it, it sounds so simple. But during that time, I had no idea. Like, how do I hire? How do I talk to my first applicants? How do I outfit my first office? How do I even find a good office space that's going to be enough for me? So all of these questions were hanging in my head. It was not simple. It was not easy. And it was definitely nothing glorious. I mean, I, I heard your joy and, and, and I heard your, your enthusiasm about me starting early. But it, it, it was not at all how you imagine it to be. <laughs> I love it. Yes, I do. I, I, You know, when I have the excitement, honestly, Sean, I mean, seeing that 22-year-old, you know, starting a business is so inspiring only because I'm an adjunct professor, right? I, after my, that's my second act, I guess. Um, and, and to your point, you gave me goosebumps when you mentioned about the divine intervention and, and signs and whatnot. It's so true because, you know, after I got laid off personally, I, it's scary. And, and what you just walked us through for you listening, the key takeaway here for me, at least from what I'm picking up from your story, and thank you so much for breaking it down, Sean, and sharing it with us is that, and I say it all the time, it's a journey, right? So many people want to, uh, you know, and it's not our fault. The social media world, what you see on Instagram, TikTok makes you want to believe that you could roll out of bed tomorrow or after listening to this podcast episode and have a successful business. We don't want to scare you or anything. And I love how honest you are, uh, Sean, in regards to that second point that you made that I think is very important is, you know, really finding the reason why you want to do this in the first place, your focus, although yeah, money's great, but you showed up doing this blog because it was in your heart and you kept doing it and you kept doing it. And so I love that. And if it wasn't for that, you wouldn't have all those wonderful companies that you have been able to, uh, to build from, SEO hacker and and beyond and being able to be on multiple stages as a professional speaker and all of that good stuff. And so I know that you shared with us some of the challenges that you face along the way uh, as you were telling us that story. But I want to ask you this question, Sean. A lot of people we, you know, that want to be in entrepreneurship lifestyle, they get overwhelmed pretty quickly, right? And so can you bring us back to that moment when you realized, wait a minute, 
my blog is something here and you started freelancing. Can we go back to that portion of your life so that you can share with us how did you manage ensuring that you edited down what was happening so that you can scale with precision, hence why you're here today? And so what are the things that you X'd out or the things that you're like, okay, other than all, obviously you mentioned you saw the SEO opportunity. Can we dive in a little bit more and, and have you walk us through that growth moment? Sure. Of course. Um, to be honest, during that time, when I made my first few contracts, it felt like I was an imposter. And I don't know about founders or CEOs of their own companies who came from corporate who were making big bucks. I'm not sure. I can't speak for them because I was almost fresh out of college when I started and I had no experience at all. I, I had no managerial experience, zero, no, not even supervisor. So I didn't know how to lead. I didn't know how to create a contract. I don't know how to pitch. I don't know. I don't know how to sell. And I felt like an imposter. It's like me questioning myself about, did I really sell that? Can I really fulfill what I put in the contract? Is what are, are, are the stuffs I'm putting in this proposal really things that I could do and pull off? So it started that way. But when I saw that I was actually able to pull off what I wrote in the contract and my clients were happy about it, it gave me more confidence and it it solidified the identity that I was questioning. It transformed me from an imposter to a professional in my head, right? Because at, at the beginning, it's all in your head. When people see the value in you and you can solve their problems, they're willing to invest value in you, which is money. They're willing to pay you for that. And at the beginning, what I we mentioned, what did I X out? What did I remove? How did I trim it or clean it? To be honest, and it sounds so silly, I Googled it. Right? I was trying to look for what do I put in my proposals and contracts that people would want and that I know would work from my own experiments. So everything that worked for me, I put it in the contract. Everything that was unethical or that didn't work, I just tossed it out the window. It's that simple when it comes to SEO. The bigger problem is we were starting, like t- Philippines is 10 years behind the rest of the world. And that's not an exaggeration. In fact, that might it might even even be worse than that. So people didn't know what SEO was during that time. They would ask me to pitch SEO, but they wouldn't know what it is. And so I had to explain what SEO was, the benefits and so on. And so it wasn't that hard for me to put an X to what should be tossed out the window and what should be put into it because I was working at a blank market. They had no idea what should be in it and what shouldn't be in it. They just knew that they had to have the results, which is first page rankings. And that's about it. The results. That's what is going to make us successful, right? I love that you brought this up and I love that you walked us through because, again, there's a lot out there and a lot of people, you know, that want to be freelancers and be self-employed successfully. We believe that we need to do the TikTok and pointing at the words and at the same time do this because everybody else is doing. But at the end of the day, if what you're offering does not have that value and does not provide the answer to that problem, what's the point? And I love, love that you shared that, Sean. And the other thing before I uh, move on to the next question. This is such a great conversation, by the way. Hopefully, you're enjoying this uh, listening, and and I'm guessing that you are because if you're listening up to this point, uh, I'm pretty sure you're enjoying this. So uh, I, I'm so excited, and Sean and I are very grateful that you're still here. But um, the second thing I wanted to say is that providing that value is one thing, and being authentic about that value is another thing because I've experienced this myself, hiring freelancers for my own business where at the end of the day, the delivery was okay, but you could tell that it didn't come from a place of, I love what I do kind of feeling. And so it was more like a copy paste from them and genuinely did not perform as they, you know, what I had anticipated. So it's, it's so, so important that value that you shared um, in regards to being very successful when you are self-employed. And so as we wind down towards the end of this episode, um, Sean, 
I wanted to ask you, uh, how did you get started in ensuring that you build credibility? Um, and I say this because I have a previous episode on this podcast where I talk about one of the successful things that we can do as self-employed individuals is to network, right? And to ensure that we build a personal brand that is going to set us apart from anyone, everyone in the industry that we're in uh, by providing that value, but really networking and connecting. But with that comes, you know, making sure that when your brand, your name is brought up in the room that you're not in, right? Um, it is definitely aligned with your brand. And so you talk about, and uh, you know, when I do my research to learn more about your work, reputation management, which for me feels like very, very hand in hand with networking. You're a professional speaker. You're very busy on stages, in person, virtually and whatnot. And that comes along with credibility and building that. How did you come about wanting to talk about that? First of all, reputation management and you know, tell us a little bit more about the Sean She today, the CEO today, and and because obviously, I'm with your businesses, you have teams working on the SEO and whatnot, and you're out there impacting people's lives. And so, how did that come come about? How did you start that that um, personal branding journey of yours? That's a very good question, Martin. So, when it comes to credibility. It's all about first investing value in yourself. People would find out if you are trying to pose as someone, you're speaking from a place of an inauthentic knowledge. Inauthentic, I mean, what I mean by that is it's not you. You're just trying to get bits and pieces from places where you've heard this and that sounds cool. You've read this and that sounds nice, but that's all you have because you did not go in depth. It did not go as deep as as it should have, such as how I invest in myself is I listen to audiobooks, I read books, I listen to podcasts, I ask mentors for time, like one hour time, I pay for the food and I ask them questions. The things that I invest in myself are very intentional and the depth of the knowledge that I gain from them and how I apply it so that it turns to wisdom is years in the making. And so whenever I am given the opportunity to speak on stage or to speak on a podcast such as this, and it is a big blessing and, an, and it is a big honor for me to do this, I am speaking from a place that is completely authentic because the, it, the value that I put in myself made me who I am. It's not just bits and pieces of cool stuff to say. It is really something that I deeply embody, practice, and value. So... Going on to the word networking, people think that networking is about getting to know so many people, getting as much calling cards as you can in a certain event. It's not that. When you network, the most important thing that you do is you place value that you can put on the table and you put it on the table. And when I say you put it on the table, you put it on the table for each and every person that you can help in that room. The people that I've met who have significant influence in my life and who have significant influence in the market, in other people's lives, in other biz- businesses, I make sure to hit them up and say, hey, can I help you in X and Y? Because I could see that you're having a problem there. For example, they're having problems in, in their website, in their rankings, in the design, in the speed, in the hosting, whatever it is, I offer them help. And then I tell them, this will cost you nothing. I just really want to help. And someday I'm going to ask them something that is just one little thing, such as, hey, can you give me your advice on this? Hey, can you give me 30 minutes of your time? I just want to learn from you. And this builds the relationship. When you network, it's all about the relationships you build. It's not about who you know and how many you know. It's about how you know them and how they know you. That is something that I want everyone listening in to understand because so much of the word networking has been watered down to just getting to know so many people and um, just, you know, being out there. It's not that. A lot of people have tried that and they still have weak networks. Now, you mentioned I was young and um, 
And yes, I was. And I was doing all of these things, trying to build value, trying to build my credibility, trying to network. And to be honest, when I was like 22, 23, it was pretty difficult because sometimes people would ask my age and they'd find out I was 22, 23. And it'd be difficult for me to have some solid foundation in the relationship because they think I'm too young. They were afraid I was inexperienced. These things come into play. And this is why if you are a young entrepreneur or a a young person who is considering entrepreneurship or self-employment right now listening in, the most important thing you can do is invest in yourself. I cannot stress that enough because wisdom, I do believe, does not come with age. Wisdom comes with intention. You have to be so intentional about your personal growth, learning from a lot of people, books, audiobooks, podcasts, mentors, like these people, the Bible even, right? So I've read the Bible 14 times. I've gained a lot of wisdom with learning from God's word. I mean, where else can you grow more than reading reading God's word, the Bible? At least that's what I believe in. And that helped me out phenomenally. I'm 34 now, and I mean, I cannot tell you how many people have come to me and say, thank you so much for the wisdom you shared, for your work, for your advocacy. And now I jump to reputation management, which you touched base on. Reputation management is really, it is brand building, yes, but it is also management of a brand that is tarnished. So I'm in the field of SEO and digital marketing, and if there's a businessman, a politician, or or a corporation that has bad news coming out when you search for their names, it is my job to clean that up, assuming they have the right to be forgotten and they made amends for what they've done. If they haven't and the news is fresh, I turn them down as a client. I just don't accept clients like that. So reputation management is actually a service that we do at SEO Hacker. And I stress the importance of building a very good brand, especially digitally, where A lot of people would look you up first on Google and your website and Facebook and LinkedIn before they even ever shake your hand. So if you don't manage your branding and reputation online, it's going to be very difficult for you to convince people that, hey, I'm a good person and there's more to me than my website or that article in the news that says something bad about me. So that is something that I hope all of you listening in here would start building as early as now, especially if you're thinking of starting a business, that is extremely important because SEO does take time. And the earlier you start, the better for you and the harder it is for bad news to creep in in your search results. I could say that the CEO I am today, Martin, is built by so many things and so many factors. I cannot tell you that I am who I am today because of my own effort. I cannot. It is a series of divine interventions. We go back to what God has been able to do in my life. I cannot boast about anything except for that. All the mentors, all of the books that they tell, they told me to read, all of the podcasts that I simply happened to stumble upon, all of the audiobooks that have been recommended by platforms such as Audible, and I downloaded them and listened to them while I'm driving, exercising, or taking a shower. All of these things culminate to who I am today and how I lead a CEO. It, you cannot do it alone. I've taken wisdom from all of these authors, from all of these speakers, and I distilled them and I applied them. And that's how you also are able to pass on this value to your network, to other people, to your own website, to your branding and reputation online. I hope you got good value out of what I just said, because that was that's pretty long. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Absolutely. Listen, you gave us so much. The jams are hot, 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 hot. I mean, being intentional, right? So good. I always say this, Sean, and for you listening, I always say this, my energy is on a budget. Uh, Because, you know, it's so critical to your point to ensure that we are strategic, especially when you're working on being an entrepreneur, potentially if you're at your current nine to five, you don't have a lot of time. And I remember that was my story for a long time. I have two kids, I'm working a very demanding job, yet I want to invest in my dream. And I did exactly what you broke broke down for us just now, Sean. I was intentional. I invested in myself. To your point, reading books, listening to podcasts, leveraging my lunch break to be on a webinar, for example, in my 
office, aka car, right? In the parking lot at work. And so I love, love, love uh, tremendously your uh, authenticity. I love how you uh, put all the, the, this quote that I say all the time, you, you, you put it all into context. I always see this scale with precision, right? And listening to your story, listening to your wisdom, listening to your insights to me has put this quote into context, scale with precision. I am so grateful that you have taken the time to be here, Sean. And let me tell you, I am absolutely honored and I want to congratulate you for what you've been able to accomplish to date. And I know that God has so much more in store for you. And we are excited for you. I know I am. And for for you listening, hang on tight because uh, you know, I tell you this all the time. If you've been around the block here, uh, and and if you're new, listen up. I always see this, and it could be the professor and me. You got homework after this episode. I want you to check out the show notes seriously, so that you can find out more about Sean, connect with him, let him know that you listened to this wonderful conversation. And so, Sean, without further ado. Would you mind sharing with us the details that are in the show notes? I have the link to your social, but you know, like where do you hang out the most? What's the best way to get in touch with you? What do you have to offer us to help us continue to be successful at our self-employment journey? Okay. So the first one that would be super obvious, if you search for my name, my website comes up, sean.c. If you're wondering how I'm able to buy my name and surname, Dot C is Slovenia. So it just happens to be my surname also. So it's the best way to get in touch with me is to go to my website. There's a contact form there at the bottom most area. If you're more into social media, I'm also on LinkedIn, although I don't check in on LinkedIn daily. But you can leave me a message there. You could also get in touch with me, follow me on Instagram or message me on Instagram. I don't check in daily on Instagram as well, but I do check in like every week at least. I also have my Facebook page, my Twitter. I'm on digital marketing, so I have a lot of channels that you can reach out to me in. Um, I also have the Leadership Stack podcast, which is on Spotify. And we have different episodes on Spotify. And we have different episodes on YouTube. On YouTube, we are now combining the episodes that we have about leadership, entrepreneurship, and management with a little bit of lifestyle. So you can watch me drive and go camping with my family and my team at SEO Hacker and have fun just swimming in the beach, just being able to set up our roof tents, our awnings, being able to cook over campfire, those things. So if you're keen on checking me out on YouTube, the link is going to be um, leadme.ph slash leadership stack, or Martine is kind enough to just put it down there for you. Thanks so much, Martine. Absolutely, Sean. It was my pleasure. And yes, all of this is in the show notes. And again, that is your homework for you listening. And I am so happy that you made it all the way to the end of this episode. This brings me a lot of joy. It motivates me to continue to actively curate amazing guests, just like Sean, to give you the insights, to give you the motivation, and give you the action steps that you need to take to continue to invest time, energy, and beyond so that you are a successful self-employed individual in this modern world, right? Thank you again for listening. I look forward to being in your earbuds in the next episode. Thank you.